Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate to you the interesting way that Luminar Neo handles editing. I have this unedited RAW file and I'm just going to do a very simple edit to it. I'm going to go to the develop tool first and in the develop tool I'm going to add some smart contrast and maybe I'll open up the shadows a bit. Then I'm going to jump down to the blacks and whites and I'm going to make the whites just a little brighter and I'll make those blacks just a little darker, kind of add a little contrast to the image and then I'm going to jump down to color and I'm going to add some saturation. So Nothing too outrageous with the sliders, all slight movements as far as the develop tool was concerned. Now next, I want to do something with the sky. I want to enhance the sky a little more. So I'm going to close down the develop tool and I'm going to go to the enhance tool and I'm going to go to sky enhancer and push that to the right. So I've made the sky a little bit more blue and added maybe a little contrast to it. Now let's just pretend that after I've done that, I want to go back up into the develop module and take away some of that saturation I added. So I'll go to the develop module or the develop tool and look at everything is zeroed out. All my adjustments are gone. Where did they go? Well, they're over here in this edits tab. If I go to the edits tab, you'll see they're in the order that they were last done. I just did the enhance adjustment by moving the sky enhancer slider to the right. And below that is the develop adjustments I just did. And if I open that, you'll see there's the super contrast or smart contrast, I'm sorry, that I added, the shadows that I adjusted, the whites and blacks, and the color. So I could come in and let's say lower saturation. That's what I wanted to do. Now the advantage of having this uh, up there, meaning the things we just did added to this edits panel means that we could add more in more than one instance of any of these tools. For example, let's say I want to enhance the trees in the midground there. So I'll go to the landscape tool and I'm going to go to foliage enhancer and I'm going to move that to the right. So I'm just going to move it quite dramatically to the right, all right, uh, so that you could see the adjustment. But I didn't want the adjustment as much on these uh, grasses in the foreground. So what I'll do is I'll mask it to the trees that are just in the midground. So I'll get this mask tool and I'm going to paint the mask in and I'm not going to do a great job. I'm just going to do it very quickly so that you guys could see it. And let's just say I want it on these, only on these trees over here. So now you could see that um, it's only affecting those trees in the midground that are on the right side of the image. Fine. I'll close that down. Now you'll see if I go to edits, there it is. It's the last adjustment I did. And again, it's only affecting those trees on the right hand side. I'll go back to tools and I'll again add a new landscape adjustment. And let's just say on this one, I want to affect, I don't know, the, the beach. I want to make the beach a little more golden. So I'm going to go to golden hour with that and I'll move that to the right. So I'm making the sand basically more like warm, but it's affecting the entire image, isn't it? I only want it to affect the beach. So I'll move that up. Again, I'll get the mask tool and I'm going to paint the mask in. I'll get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And I'm again, not going to do a great job. I'm just going to do it very quickly so you could understand how this works and why this actually is a pretty good idea of how they handle these edits. So now I've affected just the beach with this tool. Of course, I didn't paint very well, so it's affecting areas around the beach a little bit because I didn't paint my mask in quite right. And if I go up to the edits tab again, you can see that we now have two instances of the landscape tool. One that is, has the golden hour slider affecting just the beach, and then the one below it that has the foliage enhancer slider just affecting the right hand side of those uh, the trees that are in the midground on the right. So this is a I think a pretty good way to handle these edits. Um, what I foresee they don't have all the tools in here by the way 
uh, yet. I'm working on what they're calling the media copy of Luminar Neo. This isn't the final release. When it is released, it is going to look a little different than this, and it will have more tools in it. For example, I'm missing the tools uh, to enhance a person's face. So if you have a group of people, what bugged me about Luminar AI is it was very difficult to just have your adjustment affect one face and then add another adjustment that would affect a second face. And that those adjustments would be different than the first adjustments you did and so on. So if you have a group of four people with this, you could have four instances of, let's say, the skin adjustment and then four instances of the face enhance adjustment where you could enhance eyes differently on the four different people and so on. So I think this is um, a really clever way to handle editing in Luminar Neo. And again, when they uh, hopefully uh, update this, whether it's the media copy or when they do finally release it and it has all the tools here, I will do a full demonstration on it, demonstrating how one would go about, let's say, editing multiple faces, multiple people, uh, different situations for landscape images, and so on. So that's it for now. Um, hopefully they release this very soon. I don't have a release date, but when I do, I will let you know. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.